Hi guys, in this video we're going to be learning about electromagnetic waves. We'll talk about transferring energy in microwave ovens. We'll talk about transferring energy in electric heaters. And we'll finish with a summary. So let's start by discussing electromagnetic waves. It turns out that electromagnetic waves like light do not need a medium to travel through. So for example, typically when we see a light bulb, of course, we're sat here on Earth and we take a look at the light bulb and we see the light coming from it. And we know that for our situation on Earth, this light is traveling through the air between us to reach our eye. But even if the air wasn't there, if there was nothing there at all, the wave would still be able to travel from the bulb to our eye. In other words, electromagnetic waves like light can travel through a vacuum. Now a good example of a vacuum is the space in between the Earth and the Sun. So of course this picture is not at all to scale, but light can travel from the Sun to the Earth because it does not need a medium to travel through. Just to remind you again, space is a good example of a vacuum because there is pretty much nothing in space. But light can still travel from the Sun to the Earth because light can travel through a vacuum. Light doesn't need a medium to travel through. For an example of a wave that can't do this, sound cannot travel from the sun to the earth because sound needs air to travel through. Remember that sound is a vibration of particles. And so without any particles to vibrate, the sound wave can't travel. Now our definition of a wave involved vibrations, we said that waves were vibrations or oscillations which transferred energy from one place to another. So if light doesn't need a medium, what is it that's oscillating or vibrating? It turns out that the things which are oscillating are quite abstract quantities. They're called electric and magnetic fields. And again, these are the things which oscillate. And it's because it's the electric and magnetic fields that are oscillating that we call these waves electromagnetic waves. There's two important facts to know about electromagnetic waves. First of all, they are transverse waves. In other words, the oscillations are perpendicular to the direction of motion of the wave. So here, let's just draw that right angle to show the vibrations or oscillations and the direction of travel of the wave are perpendicular. Another fact that it's going to be worth knowing about electromagnetic waves is that they all travel at the same speed in a vacuum. So what we're looking at here is lots of different frequencies of electromagnetic waves, but it turns out that if we were looking at these in a vacuum, they would all have the same velocity. The last thing I just mentioned involved talking about different frequencies of electromagnetic waves. So what frequencies can electromagnetic waves have? It turns out that you can have electromagnetic waves of any frequency or wavelength. So electromagnetic waves can have really, really high frequencies or really, really low frequencies. And we have different names for the different frequencies that electromagnetic waves have. For example, the highest range of frequencies we call gamma rays. Next, we have X-rays, which have slightly lower frequencies. Lower frequencies than that, we have ultraviolet waves. And then we have visible. And by visible electromagnetic waves, we mean light. We can go to even lower frequencies, and the frequencies just lower than the electromagnetic waves that we can see are called infrared waves. And then we have microwaves. And finally, the lowest frequency waves are called radio waves. So that's all the different frequencies of electromagnetic waves we can have. We can have electromagnetic waves of any frequency. We say that the electromagnetic waves form a continuous spectrum. And this is a phrase which essentially captures the idea that electromagnetic waves can have any frequency. It tells us that the spectrum is continuous. In other words, there's no gaps. There's no frequencies that we can't have. Now, different ranges of wavelengths or frequencies of electromagnetic waves have different names. And we've already briefly run through all the names, and you might actually recognise some of these names. For example, microwaves and radio waves. 
And we will make this link between these names and the uses of these electromagnetic waves later. For example, microwave ovens really do use microwaves and radios really do use radio waves. So in this spectrum, as the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases. So the direction of increasing frequency is this direction. So remember we said that the gamma rays had the highest frequencies. Let's talk first about the lowest frequencies or the largest wavelengths. Well, the electromagnetic waves with the largest wavelengths are called radio waves. And for example, an old analog radio actually would emit these radio waves. We see that these waves have large wavelengths. Now the electromagnetic waves with the shortest wavelengths are called gamma rays. So obviously this diagram is not to scale, but we've represented gamma rays by having much shorter wavelengths. And one interesting source of gamma rays is from unstable or radioactive atoms. Now it turns out that we can see some electromagnetic waves, but our eyes can only detect a small range of wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. So when we try to look at electromagnetic waves, it's only some of these frequencies and wavelengths in the middle of the spectrum that we can actually see. And we call these waves in that range of wavelengths that we can see light or visible light. And so, for example, it turns out that a light bulb is a source of electromagnetic waves. It's just that they're electromagnetic waves that we're very familiar with. In other words, what we commonly call light is simply the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can see. So like all other waves, electromagnetic waves transfer information or energy. So as a wave travels along, it carries with it energy and information. And this is true for all the different frequencies of the spectrum. When gamma rays travel, they're going to take energy with them. And when radio waves travel, they're going to take energy with them. However, let's start by talking about microwaves. Now, microwave ovens emit electromagnetic waves of a certain frequency, unsurprisingly called microwaves. So you close the door, you switch the microwave on, and what it starts doing is it starts firing around these electromagnetic waves. So how on earth does this help the microwave oven to cook something, for example, a pie? So the whole goal of any oven, let alone a microwave oven, should be to heat up this pie, to put energy in its thermal energy stores. So let's see how the microwave oven does this. When the microwave oven is switched on, the microwaves carry energy from the oven to the pie. So here's those microwaves again. They get emitted from the microwave and they reach the pie. And of course, remember that these waves carry energy. So they bring energy to the pie. Now the pie will have water molecules inside it. And these water molecules are able to absorb the microwaves. So we've got this microwave coming towards the pie. And if we zoom in on the pie, what we would see amongst other things is lots of water molecules. And it turns out that water molecules are able to absorb these microwaves. But whenever you hear about a wave being absorbed, you should instantly remember that that wave was carrying energy. So you need to think about where the energy has gone. In this case, the energy from the microwave is going to be transferred into the thermal energy store of the water. So this is the thermal energy store of the water. So now all of the water in the pie has heated up. This thermal energy is then going to be transferred to the middle of the pie by conduction. So let's start off by reminding ourselves how conduction works. The idea is that we heat up some part of a material. And when you really look down to it, what heat really is, is the vibrations of the particles in the material. It's how much kinetic energy all of these particles have. So these particles start vibrating. As they vibrate, they knock into other particles and they make those particles vibrate as well. And in this way, the vibrations are passed through the whole material. And so therefore, since the heat is the vibration of the particles, the heat is transferred through the material. 
And so in exactly the same way, the water molecules start vibrating because they've heated up and these vibrations are transferred to the rest of the pie by conduction. And so that's how a microwave oven heats up a pie. Let's find another use for this energy transfer by electromagnetic waves. We can use the energy transferred by electromagnetic waves to heat objects in general. So again, here is some random electromagnetic wave. And as it moves on with some velocity, it carries energy with it. Now it turns out that anything that already has some heat energy will emit electromagnetic waves in a range of frequencies called infrared waves. So let's imagine that pie that we just heated up in the microwave oven. Because it has thermal energy, it has heat energy, it is now emitting infrared waves. But it turns out that this can work the other way around as well. When objects absorb infrared waves, they get hotter. So let's imagine we have infrared waves and when they strike on an object, the object absorbs them and as a result, energy is transferred to the thermal energy store. In other words, the object after absorbing the waves gets hotter. And it turns out that this is exactly how an electric heater works. So we often use an electric heater to keep us warm. So how exactly does it do that? We know it's going to have something to do with electricity. And it turns out that sure enough, in an electric heater, there is a very long wire. So here is our wire. Now, when we plug in an electric heater, it turns out that current is going to flow through this wire. But when current goes through a wire, we know that the wire will heat up. So here we see our hot glowing wire. But we learned something just recently about hot objects when we were looking at that hot pie. We said that because it was hot, it was going to emit infrared waves. And it's the same here. The wire is hot. And since it is hot, it will emit infrared waves. So here's our hot wire. And here are those infrared waves being emitted. But these infrared waves carry energy away from the wire too. If we stand next to the heater, we're going to end up absorbing some of these infrared waves and hence absorbing some energy. So here's one of those infrared waves emitted by the wire. It reaches us where it's absorbed. And again, energy is carried with it. In particular, we will then absorb this energy and the energy will go into our thermal energy store. So therefore, the overall process is that energy has been transferred from the heater to our thermal energy store, therefore heating us up. So if we just drew the energy transfer, it would be from the wire to us. So energy has been carried from the heater to us by an infrared wave. And so we have used infrared waves to heat ourselves up. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE physics and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the SnapRevise smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.